So guys, we're getting started a couple minutes early, at least I'm going to uh, fill in a little bit of time here because I noticed after I started that my desktop audio was not playing for you guys so you could not hear the uh, Pandora station I was playing. So you were just listening to me humming until I turned my mic off and then you were just listening to silence. But anyways... Um, Yes, yeah, so today is the Tech Talk. I usually do these on Saturdays at 2 Eastern. I completely forgot because my work schedule is kind of random. Uh, this week I worked Monday and Tuesday, and then I worked Friday. And Wednesday and Thursday really felt like Saturday and Sunday for me. And actual Saturday and Sunday, which to be today being Sunday, feels like to <laughs> Wednesday and Thursday, to be honest. <laughs> so my schedule is all sorts of mixed up, but... Sunday is my fallback day in case I get busy on Saturdays and can't do my tech talk. So no big deal. But anyways, so our tech talk is going to be about the PS4, the Xbox uh, specifically, but also we have the Switch. Uh, and we're going to be talking about the newest Xbox and the PS5 also. What we're talking about is the console upgrades and not just full upgrades like the PS4 to the PS5. But the half upgrades, like the PS4 to the PS4 Slim to the PS4 uh, Pro, like the Xbox One to the Xbox One S to the Xbox One X, and then also looking at the upgrades from PS4 to PS5, Xbox One to Xbox Series X. Uh, and yes, I understand if uh, all the different types of Xboxes sound really weird. That's because uh, their naming convention is really weird. So if you hear, hear Xbox Ones, Xs, Twos, Numbers, who knows? <laughs> but but the, uh, we'll go over that later. And you might be wondering about the Switch, but they've even done an upgrade themselves and have announced that they're doing another upgrade. Uh, they haven't really expected... Well, again, we'll get to that too, but they've they've announced that they're doing upgrades too. So let's let's uh start at the beginning here i'm matt from that matt 85 and you often see me on john bear stream during our wednesday podcast for uh the bear side of the mat talking about wwe and AEW. you might see me doing my singles uh matches on our youtube channel i also do a movie podcast with my friend pat and i also do a tech podcast and a little bit of streaming fall guys lately uh, thank you for everybody that's tuning in right now. Thank you for everybody that's tuning in later. And thank you for everybody that's going to check this out on YouTube, on uh, that Matt 85 at YouTube. Also on Twitter, so you can see what I'm doing, what I'm keeping up with, and my random comments on sports, wrestling, and technology. Uh, look for that Matt 85 at, on Twitter. So it'll be at that Matt 85 on Twitter. So, today we're talking about. Uh, if, if you had a, and this started, really, this started with, uh, I guess we can go all the way back to the PS1. Oh, we might even be able to go all the way back to the NES if you really want to. The NES, the original, top, uh, not top loader, you slid it in, you pressed it down, you pressed the button, you took it out, you blew in it, you slid it back in, pressed it down, pressed the button. That is how it worked to get your... Uh, original NES working and I believe that's in the US and in Europe the and Australia the Japanese version was a top loader you put it in and uh, that's how all those consoles worked after that point but for the NES uh, towards the end of its life after the SNES had come out they released a new version of the NES where it was a top loader you slid your carts in the top there wasn't that hole you needing to blow in it because the connections were bad um, you uh, loaded it up like that, and that's how it worked. And that's kind of the first kind of upgrade. Granted, the only upgrade for the NES there was just that it was going to work more consistently and that you top-loaded it, which was a little easier than sliding it in the front. It was a bit uh, slimmer, too. Um, sorry, somebody's car's alarm is going off, and I'm wondering what the heck is going on. But it's not my car. I can see my car, so I don't have to worry about it. So anyways... <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so we're wise. Okay, so for uh, we move on to Nintendo didn't do that with the SNES or the N64 or any of the other ones, really. Hi there, uh, <laughs> Frog Tape, or if you don't mind me saying Lennon, welcome uh, to Monkas. I'm not sure exactly what that is, but uh, 
where was that? Oh, right. So, PS1, though, uh, had the original PlayStation, big console. They made a second version of it that got rid of kind of the uh, expansion bay because they didn't really use it for anything, and it was being used to kind of hack the PS1. And then they came out with the, the actual PS1 uh, because at the time it was just the PlayStation. They didn't have a PlayStation 2, so there's no reason to call it PlayStation 1. So they came out with the PS1. It was a lot smaller. Uh, and uh, that was mainly the purpose of it, to get a little more life out of the PlayStation 1. They created a new version of it, uh, the smaller, slim version of it, you could call it. Um, and this came out after the PS1's life was about to disappear. So you have the PS2, and that's where they come up with the PS2 Slim. After, again, after the PS3 is launched, they want to get a little bit more out of the PS, uh, PS2. Uh, they created the PS Slim. It was a lot slimmer. It had a door that opened up like this instead of a tray that came out. And I don't believe the hardware was any better, though. It was just uh, a lot smaller. And how do they do this? They, uh, you know, after so many years, technology, especially at the time, was coming smaller and smaller. You start by creating something at whatever size you have to create it. Usually it's a bit bigger. And over the years, you can create transistors smaller. You can create CPUs smaller. You can create RAM smaller. You fit it all down on a smaller motherboard, and you can fit that in a smaller case. Um, and again, we had the same thing with the PS3, where they came up with the PS3 Slim. Um, so then we look at PS4, where they actually start to do upgrades. They had the PS4, the PS4 Pro, and the PS4, sorry, the PS4, the PS4 Slim, and the PS4 Pro. With Xbox, Xbox, the original Xbox was just. Uh, normal Xbox. They didn't really upgrade that. They had the Xbox 360. The 360 got kind of a slim version, which I believe was just smaller. It wasn't necessarily better. And we had the uh, Xbox uh, One, which had the Xbox One S version. And I believe that was, uh, again, just a, a slimmed down version. I don't, I, well, we're going to take a look at it here to see what, what all changed with it. And we had the Xbox One X, which uh, again, we're going to take a look at it, but was an upgrade. And as far as Nintendo, they didn't really do upgraded versions until you get to uh, where we're at right now with the Slim. I mean, some people consider the Wii U to be an upgrade of the Wii, but I consider that to be a, a brand new console, essentially. But we had the Switch, and they put out a newer version of the Switch with a longer battery, and they just announced yet another version of the Switch that will be coming out 2021. Uh, so... Yes, let's take a look at we'll look at the PS4 uh, versions really quick here. So um, I don't have the picture for you. Let's. Uh, There's not really much of a picture to see. I'm just going to rattle off. So, well, you know what? It's it's always better to have pictures. So let me clip this really quick. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. I'm going to put the picture up for you guys to see in a second here. Uh, save. Do, 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 do. Okay, and let me add it really quick here. Sorry, I just realized right now that this would have been a good idea. No, we don't want that. We want uh, image. PS4. Do, 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 do. And we're going to expand this this over here and my face has to be on top because it's beautiful so there we go uh that didn't where where is it Four. no we got this right okay but i need to shrink this okay we're gonna do this okay guys there we go so as you can see with the PS4, we have the original model, the 8-core AMD Jaguar uh, CPU. The PS4 Slim has that same uh, processor. And then we have the PS4 Pro with a 2.1 gigahertz 8-core AMD Jaguar, the same processor, but runs at a faster frequency. That is going to allow for faster processing, of course. Uh, the GPU, we have uh, a 1.84 teraflop. AMD Radeon. It's the same for the PS4 Slim. 
and then we get to the PS4 Pro and it's now a 4.2 teraflop AMD Radeon uh, that is a lot faster and the graphics processing is really the core of uh, what a uh, gaming system is going to use to process everything basically. It's going to process it faster, it's going to be able to process more at the same time. Memory, uh, we have the same amount of memory throughout and uh, the PS4 Pro adds an extra gig for what? I don't really know. Um, now it says HDR is enabled for PS4, PS4 Pro, or PS4 Slim, and PS4 Sl Pro. The original PS4, the, I don't believe the HDR was very prominent on it. Uh, if you got the Slim, then you could indeed turn on uh, HDR, and I had troubles with it, to be honest, on my TV. But we get to the PS4 Pro, and it is integrated for sure. 4K was the big integration with the PS4 Pro, whereas the, orig the original and the Slim didn't have it. Uh, storage, the PS4 Slim adds an extra terabyte. Uh, the PS4 Pro is a terabyte. Um, the amount of USBs is expanded to 3 on uh, PS4 Pro. Plus on the Slim, they added the 3.1. Same with the PS4 Pro. Just a little bit of upgrade. I don't remember exactly what the USB 3.1 added over the 3.0, but um, it uh, it adds something. I don't know if it was charging faster or faster bandwidth or just the ability to communicate back and forth better. Uh, wireless. The PS4 Slim added uh, 5 gigahertz instead of having to be on the 2.4 gigahertz, which, uh, trust me, is a lot, lot faster than if you're on the 2.4 gigahertz. And uh, this is a different thing to talk about for a different time, but your uh, 5 gigahertz wireless signal is going to be a lot smaller range, but a lot faster. And your 2.4 is a lot slower, but it's a bigger range. It's going to cover your whole house, hopefully. Uh, and then we see Bluetooth there got upgraded for the Slim in the PS4 Pro. And uh, while we're here looking at this, we're gonna you're going to ask, why do we care about these upgrades? It's still the same thing. They can all play the same games. Um, so why do we care about this upgrade? Well, here's a good example. And considering that I play MLB The Show, a lot of people I know play MLB The Show, and a lot of people watching me play MLB The Show, MLB The Show is a good uh, demonstration. So it's somewhat well known, especially among top players, that you want to play in uh, minor league parks because they have less people in the crowd, and that creates less of a lag. Now, if you're running a PS4 Pro, chances are you're not really even seeing that lag. Why? Because it processes a heck of a lot faster than the original PS4. Now, talking amongst the people I know, because I have a PS4 Pro and I haven't noticed the lag, but talking amongst the people I know, people who have PS4 Pro don't notice that lag. People that don't have PS4 Pro notice that lag big time. So there is a big difference. And you're wondering, why would they do that? Uh, well, the creators, they could, I mean, you're playtesting your game. Uh, some of the really fine points, like lag, may not be noticeable amongst the playtesters. Um, especially because you need to get to a high level before it's something that you really notice. Uh, but especially competitively it's a big thing um why so yeah so you would think maybe it's more difficult to create a game that's going to have more graphics and become possibly laggy uh or it's a thing too you know they might be like hey you know ps4 pro has been out for a while you can't even buy a regular ps4 anymore why are we going to program for the ps4 we should program for the ps4 pro to get the most out of our game uh, and you would think again, I was going to say, you would think it might be harder to program more in there to get make it more graphically uh, challenging. But that's not really the case. So, for example, again, with uh, and it'll be the show, you don't program each individual person in their seat in the crowd. You just copy paste, copy paste, copy paste for all the seats. And that takes a set, you know, a quick second. And it's not exactly that simple, but it's almost that simple. And the more times you copy paste people into the crowd, the more graphics it's got to process, the more actions you have them do, especially if you want them to be unique actions and not have everybody do all the same thing at exactly the same time, then that's going to stress out your regular processor, not just your GPU. Um, so there you see the changes, uh, the PS4 Pro um, really enhances things, but 
uh, again, the people are told that when you're making your games for the PS4 Pro, they've got to be able to be used on the regular PS4. So you can't have, like... I mean, it'll try to play it anyways, but it'll have some trouble. If it's rarely noticeable, the PlayStation uh, or Sony might reject your game or whatever the case may be. Um, but... Uh, it, that doesn't mean it can't play at all. It just has to be playable. And that's that's where you got the difference between like the PS5 coming out. Now, PS5 games don't have to be compatible with the PS4. It's kind of backwards. The PS5 is going to be PS4 compatible, so you can put your PS4 just in the PS5 and play it. And uh, there's different ways to do that. That's a different topic for a different time, but it's not the other way around. Uh, and that's mostly, I mean, could it do it? Again, you have, they're basically computers, and computers will try to run it as long as it has the uh, tools it needs to run it. And that's part of the difference is what tools does it have? Uh, does it have, uh, for example, with computers, if you try to put something on an older Windows version that's meant for a newer Windows version, it's going to look for the newest version of DirectX. Uh, your older computer, your Windows XP, can only go up to DirectX 9, 10 maybe if you find the right versions, but say, a newer computer game is going to need DirectX 11. Well, it's not going to be able to play it now. Uh, that's kind of the same with uh, these uh, consoles here. The consoles have their own tool set, and if they're looking for certain lines of co code, and your console doesn't do that line of code, then your console is not going to be able to play it. So that's that's mostly what the difference is there. And uh, they upgrade these lines of codes for the new versions, for, uh, like PS5 because uh, they make it easier for the programmers, they allow the programmers to do more things, and that's why it's there. So with all that explanation out of the way, we're going to move on to the Xbox, and I'm going to clip this really quick and put it on screen for you guys. Again, sorry about this, and just give me a quick second here, and we'll have this. This is a longer one here. Okay, let's clip this. You know what? I I take that back. We're going to put this in two two snips here. Cuz otherwise the Windows not going to fit on the screen there. You're not going to be able to read it anyways. Xbox One. And shoot. Let's do this. There we go. Save that. Xbox Two. And let's get them on the screen for you now. Hide that. Again, sorry for the little break here, but I wanted you guys to be able to see it because it's a lot more entertaining than not being able to see it and just have me read it. So as you see here, we have the Xbox One, the Xbox One S, and the Xbox One X comparatively to each other. The processor for the One and the One S are the same, and it gets bumped up for the One X with, uh, let's see, the One X goes the x86 type processor, which is kind of weird, but a lot of people, even when you have an x64 type processor, don't take advantage of the uh, multiple cores, so it doesn't matter anyways, but that might be over a lot of people's heads. Uh, but it's running at 2.3 gigahertz, uh, which is a faster clock speed again, which means it's going to process faster. The big again, <coughs> again, the big difference here is the GPU. The GPU on the original is uh, let's see, 853 megahertz with 12 compute units. I'm not, I mean, I understand some of that, but I don't get exactly the the compute units. I guess they're just different cores. Uh, it was a slight upgrade for the One S where it goes to a uh, 914 megahertz clock speed. And then with the Xbox One X, you have a, <laughs> a 1,172 uh, megahertz 
40 compute units. That's, uh, again, a huge jump up, and that's why the Xbox One X uh, can run these games a lot faster. But that also is kind of needed for being able to output at a higher resolution, um, especially with the GPU. We have, uh, yeah, I don't really care about the weight. <laughs> I mean, if you care, uh, it goes from 7.8 pounds down to 6.4 pounds with the One S. And the S, I guess, stands for slim, but that's the whole point is that it's a uh, smaller uh, memory. We have uh, the same RAM in the One and the One S, and then we have uh, more RAM and faster RAM in the Xbox One X. The RAM is not a big difference as long as you have enough and generally you should have enough it's not like the ps1 where you had to, a very limited amount of ram you have about as much as you need the ram speed with the gd g ddr5 instead of the regular ddr3 um, that helps but again it's not a big difference you just want to stay modern and uh they went cutting edge which i appreciate there's no reason not to but whatever uh, bus speed is just how fast it's going to be able to process again, and it's uh, bumped up again for the One X. Uh, to do memory bandwidth is kind of the same as the bus speed. Um, let's see here, storage. We had the same storage really, so not a big difference there, even on the newer ones. But again, you just need to have enough. I don't know who's going to load their system with so many one terabyte games and just demand that they don't delete anything. Um, and so the AV output, you then get the uh, 4K output with the Xbox One X and you have uh, limited 4K uh, with the One S. As I remember that was a bit of an upgrade too. So let's hide that for a second and go to some more stats here image Xbox One X no Xbox two um, there we go expand this so we can read it as well as possible um, so inputs we had uh, USB 3.1 three of them on each of them we have uh, communication we have regular we have in Wi-Fi, in Wi-Fi, the same, same on all of them actually. Uh, controllers. We have Bluetooth connectivity on the S and the uh, the One X. Camera. We well, if you bought the camera, that's a separate thing. Uh, the again, the S and the X have uh, Ultra HD Blu-ray players for the 4K Blu-ray and again limited for the S and native for the X. Uh, so as you can see again those were the different updates upgrades. I personally so here's what I did here. Um, I had the PS4 the original and I had the Xbox One original and I was fine with those in fact I still have the Xbox One original just fine with that. Uh, with the PS4, I had upgraded to a PS4 Slim, mostly because I wanted the Final Fantasy 15 exclusive PS4 Pro. Uh, and I was able to upgrade uh, at no cost to me through uh, trading, basically. And then I was able to upgrade to the PS4 Pro uh, and make a little money because the Final Fantasy 15 PS4 Slim wasn't available anymore. It was became a collector's item, so I was able to upgrade and get a better... Uh, console at uh, the same price basically without losing anything and that's helped me it's helped me with uh, being able to play games in HDR it looks beautiful uh, not having any lag and uh, the show helps uh, not a huge deal for me but it just depends on what you're doing what you're playing uh, so moving over to the switch we had the switch we had the switch that came with better battery life and we have a new switch coming out uh what are we expecting from this there really isn't even any rumors nobody knows nintendo's being kind of tight unless somebody's able to hack in there and leak it like they've been leaking tons and tons of stuff lately i don't think we're going to find out if i had to guess though i think again better battery life i think uh what do i think I mean, they might upgrade the hardware, but I don't know. Well, you know, 
they're getting a lot of third party support but those, those third parties are going to have having to dumb down their games because uh of the hardware limitations so maybe they will pump up the limitations and then you can get a full version of skyrim or whatever the next uh, morrowind's going to be um right now it's running a 720p screen and it looks nice because of the size but if you can pump that up to 1080 to kind of get to modern hd level not even 4k uh, that'd be great or if they can have it pump out uh, a high resolution for your TV that'd be even greater um, I wouldn't expect something too amazing with an upgrade to the switch uh, but you know that gets us to thinking uh, the switch hasn't they're doing these little updates and it's been out for a while but but the PS5 and the Xbox One X are coming out very soon with uh, completely new versions so is the Switch going to want to update uh, to an, uh, a successor anytime soon? I say no. I'm not even sure if they're going to update to a successor almost at all. They, I think they might just do Switch updates, uh, mini updates like they're doing uh, in 2021, like I said. It's because Nintendo had been struggling with the console and trying to do something unique, something that they want to stay with the, the big console but they they their niche where they're really making their money was the handhelds that was their bread and butter uh, so they wanted to do handhelds so what they did with the switch was exactly what they should do a handheld that is easy to plug into your TV and work as a console and it has a little bit of limitations it's not the um, huge resource hog that the Xbox and the PS4 are uh, but it doesn't have to be. It can play games just fine, and once you take it off your dock to use it as a handheld, that's what I think a lot of people are doing with it anyways. That's what I'm doing with it. Uh, in fact, the same way with uh, Sony. I love Sony's PSP and uh, PS Vita, and unfortunately they're not as popular as uh, the Nintendo's handhelds, uh, so they might be going, I mean, they are going away. If uh, Sony wanted to put out another handheld, I'd be all for it, or if Xbox wanted to try a handheld, I'd totally be open for the idea uh, but I don't see the switch updating because it's where it needs to be it's where it wants to be um, it I mean they, they tried to do a mini update with the 3ds where they did the new 3ds uh, and actually I have it a slim version of it um, it <laughs> It didn't work too well in their favor. In fact, they've gone away from the 3DS in general, but it didn't work too well in their favor because uh, I think there was only one official game put out that uh, that needed to be on the new 3DS for the extra hardware and stuff, and that was Xenoblade Saga, uh, the, the 3DS port of it. And there was a few WiiWares that used it uh, specifically too, but then it just, it just failed. <laughs> There's no use for it anymore. Uh, so yeah, I don't, I don't see them needing to upgrade it. At some point, maybe it, it just it becomes like you know we don't want to keep having people. I guess you know that's stuck with their old Switch, uh, and it's not playing the newer games very well. So maybe they'll just be like, okay, here's the Switch too. It's got better hardware, so that uh, um, game makers can create better games with it. But otherwise, I don't see why they'll need to, why they couldn't just upgrade the hardware and not need to make a whole new version. Uh, so looking at PS5 and Xbox One X, though, we have, uh, again, huge upgrades in the hardware. Uh, it's going to be trying a few different things to make better games, uh, more realistic games, games that can do more with the code and all that stuff. And that's the main reason why it's there. It, I mean, essentially could just be a PS4 Pro 2 or whatever you want to call it, or an Xbox One X, X, whatever they want to name it. They could just be the same line. Um, it's just better hardware, but they're wanting to make it so that, um, yeah, so that they can have game producers come out with the, the best top of the line type games. Uh, and as far as the Xbox One X goes, they're not going to have any Xbox One X exclusive games for the first year that it's out. 
the games are going to be optimized for Xbox One X, but they're still going to be playable on your regular Xbox One. I don't know if you need the Xbox One X or if, okay, I'm getting terms mixed up here. The Xbox Series X is not going to have exclusive games for the first year it's out. It's going to have games that are compatible with the Xbox One. I don't know if it's the Series X that you have to have or if it'll play on the regular Xbox One. Uh, but eventually it's going to have games that are Xbox One, X are Xbox Series X only. And if you have the Xbox Series X, it is backwards compatible to play the Xbox One, the Xbox 360, and the Xbox games, at least I believe so, right out of the box, not with updates and only limited games. I believe that's the same for the PS5. I think it's backwards compatible to play PS4. I know it's backwards compatible for PS4 games. I think it's also 3, 2, and 1 games. Again, I'm not entirely sure on that. But that goes to show you that the capabilities are there. It's just they're, they're, they get to a point that where they're like, okay, we don't want this game to have to be supported on these older versions of the consoles. So we're going to set the cutoff line here get these consoles if you want to get these newer games people are going to stop making games for the older consoles and the way xbox is doing it it's a little nicer to the consumer if you don't want to upgrade right away <coughs> you you don't have to you're going to be able to take those games and play them on your xbox one and uh, you might be able to do that a little ways into the future eventually people are going uh, producer are going to switch over but it's a little nicer on the producers too because for a while now, we're going we're to have some games that come out on both PS4 and PS5 versions. And for the producers, you got to make code that's compatible with the PS4 version, but designing it for the PS5 version. Because if you design it for the PS4 and just port it to PS5, it's basically the same game. It just runs on the PS5. It's not going to take advantage of what you got there. If you make a PS5 game that takes advantage of the hardware and everything you have for the PS5, uh, it's not going to be compatible with the PS4, so then you have to recode it takes a bit more work to get it down to the PS4. So with what Xbox is doing, they can have somebody that makes a game that's optimized for the Xbox uh, Series X, but still works on this Xbox One, and that saves uh, everybody all around. Basically, from what I've heard, and this included, the Xbox, the new Xbox is very, very, very consumer and producer friendly, and I think that's a great strategy for trying to uh, take a lead in the console wars that uh, they're having with Sony. Uh, Nintendo's kind of doing their own thing. Anyways, I think that's about all I got for this topic. Uh, I think we discussed a lot. I think I got a p across a lot of good points, and it's been uh, about 40 minutes here. Uh, I guess more like 30 minutes if you don't count my uh, silent intro I gave everybody. I want to say hi to everybody that's in the chat, and thank you for checking this out. If you're watching this on YouTube later, leave comments. Let me know what you think about the different consoles, uh, what your opinions are on them, uh, what you think about them releasing the little half-step upgrades, and what you think about them releasing the newer upgrades. Um, and of course, especially now, I like to respond on my YouTube channel. Again, check out my Twitter to see what's coming up, and we will see you later. Uh, thanks for tuning in.